Definitely, he must have also seen that there were some loopholes in all of this. He must have seen that, you know, in, in not, in, not in every situation did the banks benefit. There were some situations where he felt that the, the real sector, the Nigerians, were shortchanged. And so, yes, when he does have that World Press Conference on Thursday, that should be one of the aspects he should be looking at. How best can he begin to... To, to garner the confidence of Nigerians again, to ensure that, look, we, we're all about making money, that's the banks, we're all about making money, but we also want to make sure that the economy grows. We've seen that there are various sectors of the economy that can push this growth. They've talked about agriculture, they've talked about manufacturing, they've talked about the automobile sector, they've talked about key sectors that can actually grow this, this economy. And so he should begin, to, I mean, you, you can't all the time want to take, you should try to see how you can begin to give. And, you know, a lot of people are going to be expecting so much from him. He has over 26 years, and he's had this experience with a well-renowned bank. And so he should bring that experience to bear in this, in this case as well. One would, expect, one would expect that he would. But I'm saying that <coughs> in view of where he's coming from, it's unlikely. You see, the, the, the reality is that all these other things you have said about the expansion of the economy, the various sectoral uh, diversifications and things like that, these are the, that, that is the proper direction to go. Mm. But the common denominator in all these factors, in all these sectors, is the cost of funds, okay? Agriculture cannot grow with interest rate even at 7%. Okay, let's be quite honest with ourselves. Uh, industries, SMEs, cannot grow when cost of funds is 20-something percent. At the same time, cost of funds cannot come down when central bank's monetary policy rate is 12%. Meanwhile, central bank cannot bring down its monetary policy rate to benign sensible levels like 1% or even 2% as happens in successful economies elsewhere because of what? Because of the problem of excess liquidity. So until CBN is able okay, to dismantle the burden of excess liquidity, but then if you dismantle the burden of excess liquidity, how will the banks continue to make money so much? But on the other hand, if you have the interest of the people at heart, you will know that the first thing to do is ask yourself the question, <clears throat> how come for 20-something years, interminably, we have surplus cash in the economy? How come for 20-something years, we continue to say we have excess cash in the economy, but somehow the cash does not go to the real sector? How come that we're supposed to have uh, uh, money being channeled for infrastructure, meanwhile, the government itself, the central bank itself, admits that it is putting its own money, its own funds at 0% in the hands of the bank and borrowing back at 12, 13%. So, so long as these issues are not addressed, and as I say, the common denominator that is preventing the successful actualization of these issues is simply excess cash. And you must wonder where the excess cash comes from. And if Mr. Mefele is, is, a, is a, how would I say, sincere with himself, he will probably realize that excess cash is the result of CBN substitution of Naira, revi or Naira, revi Naira allocations for dollar-derived revenue. Exactly. So long as it continues in that process, honestly, uh, Harry, don't let anybody deceive you. Um, it will be more of the same. Because why? The same system has been operating for 20-something years, and you will find that it's a system that makes our people poorer when we get richer. Because you find what? In the last 20 years, our reserves have been growing. Our productivity has expanded, has doubled almost according to the new GDP rate basin. Why should our exchange rate be falling? Our exchange rate is falling very simply because there's too much Naira in the system. And what causes the so much Naira in the system? Central bank itself pours the Naira in the system to chase few dollars. The dollars that he introduces to, in, in rations facing this huge Naira surplus that's in the system. That is the reality. You can't run away from that. You can deny it, but it is a, it is a, it's yeah, a reality. So, so, so let's look at that external reserves. As of yesterday, external reserves was down to about uh, $36.9 billion from, uh, from a high of $48 billion in 2013. Now, should Mr. Mayfield introduce more proactive measures, including further tightening? of the cash reserve requirement on public or private sector deposits to help stabilize NARA and reduce taking from the nation's foreign reserves to boost <clears> the local currency. Um, I, 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 I think, Harriet, if you know the implication, the true implications of further tightening of monetary policy in terms of the impact it would have on the masses, further tightening of the monetary policy means that government has to borrow more money at higher interest rates. Okay? So, and that destroys the economy. It destroys productivity. 
So if you say, oh, the proactive measure is to further tighten, further tightening of the, of the monetary policy uh, strategy means that government would make it more difficult or the central bank would make it more difficult for people to access funds from the money market. And in order to do that, government would choose or the CBN would choose to borrow back the money and keep the money as idle funds rather than use it in the economy. Because the purpose of mopping up or taking off surplus funds from the economy is not to use it. But we are prepared to, or our central bank is prepared, or has been prepared, or has been doing so for over 20 years, prepared to pay over 10% to keep idle money. At a time that you say you need money for X, Y, Z infrastructural enhance, enhancement. So you cannot be talking of further tightening in, in the United States or more successful economies. You'll find that when you have a situation where uh, the economy is depressed, which is what it is at the moment, because really industries are not working, people are out of jobs and things like that. What you do is you put money into this, you put more money in. But our own system, we are consciously, or the central bank as the controller of monetary policy, is consciously ensuring that people cannot access the funds in the market. Because why? They know that it'd be silly for you to borrow at 20 something percent and you say you want to start up an industry, you will fail. So you probably uh, uh, step back and take a break before you take any other uh, uh, decision. Meanwhile, the central bank, in order to be able to ensure that there's no, n not so much more uh, money in the system, would continue to, of course, I you see, the evidence that the, the monetary failure has totally failed, a monetary uh, 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 strategy has totally failed, is the current uh, indications. I think yesterday or the night before, or something like that, there was indication uh, scrolling on your screen that the central bank was going to mop up another 137 billion naira. You should understand that to mean that in spite of all the monetary policy um, constraints, all the strategies of increasing cash reserve ratios and things like that, they still have failed to control excess liquidity. That is why they are still borrowing up money they are not going to need over 130 billion uh, this week. And this money, we are going to pay interest of about 10% on it and this money will not be used to build hospitals, will not be used to build schools, will not be used to build roads. What would happen? It would be kept as idle funds because the purpose of mopping up is to take up surplus cash. You cannot take up surplus cash because you think surplus cash is a problem and then reintroduce it by spending it. Mr. Boyo, yesterday I had a conversation with Dr. Teriba and um, you know, I asked him about the Mr. Mr. Emefiele is going to be looking at the monetary side. What about the fiscal side? Because you see, the economy cannot successfully grow if both are not working together. And so a lot of um, market watchers like yourself are expecting that coming on board now, he will try as much as possible to collaborate more with the fiscal uh, authorities to ensure that all the policies that will grow the economy are streamlined and everybody's not working at cross purposes. Now, looking at the way the, the, the economy is, we're talking about growing drop jobs and you've talked about lending rates and excess cash liquidity and, and the rest of it. A lot of people are fe uh, f thinking that the Naira should be devalued. Dr. Teriba was of the opinion that there isn't any need to devalue the Naira. And of course, Mr. Emefili has actually also said that there isn't any need to devalue the Naira. But there's this, there's this, this feeling that mm. the, the currency should actually be devalued because it will give more options. Or it will not give any more options. No, it will kill you. It will kill the economy. Uh, if you start devaluing uh, any further. I'm glad that uh, Mr. Emefili and uh, Dr. Teriba also um, agreed or understood that uh, further devaluation would actually kill the, the economy. Um, the, the, the reality, of course, is that uh, if you look at the historical trend, uh, the poverty rating has deepened in this country with devaluation. Okay? Uh, in the 70, 70s and early 80s, when the Naira was very strong, industries were <clears throat> popping up everywhere. A lot of people were employed. We didn't have this huge number of unemployed. Uh, Nigerians uh, could carry their heads up high anywhere in the world because their currency was very strong. Interestingly, Harriet, during that time, we had only about two or three billion dollars worth of reserves. But today, we have 40 billion, 50, we've even had 60 billion. But did you, do you, can, you, can you cast your mind back and recognize that even when we had 60 billion reserves, our highest ever reserves 
what happened? Our exchange rate was still weak. That's a, that's a, that's a contradiction. It's an anomaly. Also, it's an anomaly when you say your output, your gross domestic product has almost doubled, and your <coughs> exchange rate continues to de depreciate. I have a feeling that uh, at the end of the day, Mr. Mifflin may have to eat his words on the issue of exchange rate because if the current uh, arrangement continues, the current arrangement of CBN substituting Naira allocations, if that subsists, substituting Naira allocations for dollar revenue, if it continues, it will be, he will be a helpless man. There's no way he will say he'll be able to defend the Naira. Absolutely no way because there will be a run on the Naira. Because why? They are busy pumping more Naira in the system and selling dollars to borrow the change, and rationing dollar sales in the country, you are going to have an a, a explosion of demand for dollars, and you are going to have, what, a weaker uh, uh, Naira. But that's, so, that's next to, <coughs> almost, sorry, that's almost next to impossible, because, you see, we're import dependent. And so, as much as possible, we're always going to have to use the Naira. So, how is it going to ensure that that reduces, you know, we reduce the point of getting to where our economy now becomes dollarized, so to speak. No, I think the issue, the concept of dollarization is a misconcept. It's a misconception uh, by a lot of people as a result of media uh, disinformation. The country is already dollarized. Unfortunately, the country is dollarized because of a weak Naira. Uh, many years ago, 20 years or more ago, when the Naira was very strong, I keep telling the story of coming at the airport and wanting to catch a taxi back home. And I was coming from abroad, and I only had dollars and pounds in my pocket, I think about 100 pounds or something like that. And I offered to pay the taxi driver in, in, in dollars or, or pounds, and he refused. He said he wanted Naira, because why? He knew the value of the Naira at a time that we had maybe two, three billion dollars worth of reserves. So you will have a situation where it is absolutely, take my word for it, it's absolutely impossible for a Mayfield to be talking of defending the Naira and continuing to make sure it doesn't de depreciate when, if it continues to ensure that Naira allocations are substituted for dollar revenue. Anybody who tells you that something else is going to happen, I, I, I can assure you, it's, it's like ABC. You know, you are having too much Naira chasing the, the, the dollar, that is the main problem, and you don't address it, and you go to address other things like saying that, oh, <clears throat> we'll do it by uh, reducing money supply and things like that. That again won't work. You have reduced money supply, <coughs> excuse me, by charging 15%, by asking banks to maintain 15% cash ratio across the board. At a time that you want banks to be lending, you are stopping them from lending. So the whole policy system is in contradiction with reality, with the, with, with the needs of the people. So I don't see how he's going to be able to defend the Naira unless he stops the, 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 um, the, 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 the feedstock of Naira depreciation, which is Na, uh, uh, CPN substitution of Naira allocations for dollar revenue. That is what is responsible for excess liquidity. And it is because of excess liquidity that the CPN has to charge, uh, has to set its monetary policy rate so high at 12%. You will ask them, well, if you have the chance to interview, find out next time. Ask them that. Suppose you didn't have any excess liquidity, sir. What rate of interest would you charge? What, what would be your NPRB? And he'll probably tell you that we probably don't need an NPR of more than 2% or 3% as the case may be. So um, I, I'm not saying take the, uh, the, what he has said with a pinch of salt about the uh, regards to devaluation, but you will have to take it with a pinch of salt if he continues to ensure that Naira allocations are substituted for dollar revenue. But just before I let you go, Mr. Boyo, during his screening, he actually talked about adopting development banking model to achieve economic growth and industrialization. Is, is it long overdue, or is the system ready for it? You see, the bank of industry is supposed to have been a development uh, bank as well. You know? So it's not the multiplicity of these banks. Uh, the, the multiplicity of such development banks is just an indication of a failed monetary policy. Because if you had a, a, a successful monetary policy, you wouldn't need to be creating banks where people can get preferential loans at 7%, because 7% rate of interest would be what is across the board for everybody. You know? So it is just a, it is a distraction. The reality, the real thing, the real McCoy is to ensure that you don't have excess liquidity. You don't continue to borrow money you don't need at 10, 11, 12% so that you don't need to have an NPR, a monetary policy rate of 12% or more that you know will instigate higher lending rates in the banks. I mean, it's simple. They know this.
Well, thank you so much, Mr. Boyo, for sharing your thoughts with us this <laughs> morning on the pleasure, program. Thank you very well, much. we'll take a quick break now, uh, but I've been speaking with an economist, Mr. Henry Boyo, and we've been looking at uh, market expectation for the new CBN governor, Mr. Godwin Imefiele, who actually assumed office today. We'll take a quick break now, come back and continue business morning.